Hey guys, Jesse here from Urban Legends Antiques and this week I'm doing two pieces of furniture and to start off with, I'm giving them both a good cleaning. November is Lung Cancer Awareness Month and the ribbon color for Lung Cancer Awareness Month is white. So I'm gonna do these in white and I just thought it was appropriate because I bought this furniture at an estate sale of a nurse who is moving out of state. I'm using Cottontail by Chalky Chicks. It's a very bright white. I'm using my HBLP pneumatic spray gun and I've thinned my paint out appropriately. You can see my other videos for how I thin my paint prior to spraying. And since it's cool enough in the garage, I can finally spray again. So we are back out here with the spray gun. Since this buffet has a lot of nice carved details, which I love, I'm going very slow with my spray gun back and forth to make sure that I get even coverage in all of those yummy little nooks and crannies. I'm being very careful to make sure that I spray on the bottom side of this lip so that no part is missed. And here is a close up of the carved wood as it's getting sprayed with my HVLP pneumatic sprayer. It's working really, really well. Chalky Chicks sprays wonderfully. I love to spray paint with the Chalky Chicks. You always get a good, even coat. I had gotten some feedback that I jiggle my spray gun when I paint and I hadn't even realized it. So now I'm very careful not to do that. You wanna be very vigilant when you're spraying a carved wooden piece that you don't miss a spot and have some missed wood that's showing. So I always make sure that I spray up, down, left, right, all angles so that way I don't miss anything. This is my second coat of paint going on to the piece and as you can see, the wood grain is showing through on the top. So I'm taking my time on this second coat to make sure that I have good coverage. There's a little bit of dust that is landing in my paint, so I'm going to have to sand this piece down prior to clear coat and waxing. I'm going to use 500 grit sandpaper. I'm using my favorite clear coat by Rust-Oleum and I'm going to brush it on with a paintbrush. There's a shortage on the sponges that you use to um, put clear coat onto the top of a piece, so I'm painting it on instead and then I'm gonna check it afterwards and if I need to, I will sand it down again. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Urban Legends Antiques. And we have a website with items available for shipping, including the paint used in this video, urbanlegendsantiques.com. I don't want there to be any extra drops of paint along the lip of the buffet. So I'm running along the edge with my brush and see that extra clear coat that came off. I'm just drying it off on a paper towel and going back along again to make sure that there's no extra clear coat right there that can cause drops of yellowing. Good morning. What's going on here? Painting. I woke up early in the morning to start working on the hutch and Chuck came looking for me and found me painting. You're gonna get the hard part done all of the edges before we start doing all of the fun detail work. Well, better you than me. Oh, I got a brush for you. <laughs> oh, I, I'm going back to bed. <laughs> Will you have me my coffee cup? Sure. And this to me is the hardest part, all of the shelves, all yeah. the little squares and the details. Okay. Lung cancer is a very hard, hard battle for people to fight and a lot of people end up losing the battle. So even though White is the color of Lung Cancer Awareness Month. I chose some black wax to add into the details just to acknowledge the grief and the loss that goes along with this disease. I'm using a stiff bristled art brush and I am actually pushing the wax down into the details of the carved wood and using a lint-free cloth to wipe it back. You want to do this in small sections at a time. If you happen to find a spot with too much black wax or you don't like the way it looks, take a little bit of clear wax on your lint-free cloth and rub over it. It will act almost like a magic eraser and remove the dark wax from that area.
I'm doing the same technique to the doors as I did to the side of the buffet, and the details here are much smaller, so the wax is going to look much smudgier when I wipe it back, but not to worry, don't panic, just trust in the process. As you can see here, it looks like a hot mess. It looks like I've ruined the piece. As I start to wipe, it's very smudgy and it doesn't look like the side of the buffet, but that's totally okay because we have clear wax that we can use to erase some of the black wax with. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Also, if you could share this video with your family and friends, it would help our growth exponentially, so we would really appreciate it. I also want to take a moment to say thank you to everyone that has followed us on this journey, all of my current subscribers, all of my followers on social media. Thank you so much for your support. Prior to painting this piece, I removed the hardware and then covered up the holes in the drawer where the hardware goes with some tape just to prevent any paint from spraying into the drawers. And the hardware is going back on. This piece is almost done. I just need to clean the velvet inside the drawers. Okay, if you wanna see that little buffet done, you gotta wait until the end of the video. We're moving on to the hutch and it's getting some clear wax first before we put the black wax on. I couldn't find the brush I was using before, so I'm using a different brush. The bristles on this one aren't as stiff, but it still works really, really well, and I'm able to push the wax down into the details of the carved wood. Painting the black wax on like this can be time consuming, but I prefer to do it this way versus just wiping the black wax on with a cloth because this gives me better control of where my black wax will go. I want it to go into the crevices and not just on the high points of the piece. As you can see, using this tiny little brush really gets down into those edges and when I buff it back, it gives a look of almost like aged stone and I think it's really, really pretty. What do you guys think of this technique? Do you like it? Do you think it looks really nice or is it not your style? Would you prefer to just wipe it on because it takes too long? Let me know in the comments below. Here's a small section that I've completed. I've already wiped the black wax back and I'm working on the next section. Here's a, a before and then as I'm wiping it back, it just gives it a nice soft look. It softens the look of the black wax versus those strong lines if you had just painted it and left it. You can use your lint-free cloth and buff back as much or as little of the black wax as you want, especially because there's clear wax down first, it will not adhere to the paint. The clear wax is adhere to the paint, and then this right here, you're just kind of buffing over it. And if you don't like it, just take clear wax and wipe it back more. Here we go, I'm pulling up some clear wax because there's too much black wax on this part for my liking. So you just take a little bit of clear wax, wipe it over the black wax and it will help to erase that black wax off of your piece and give you the uniform look you want. I'm just gonna finish this piece up because it is going into our shop for dealer's night. If you've seen my other videos, you know dealer's night happens on the last Thursday of the month and it gives us a chance to come in after the shop is closed to do a reset or a restage. We can paint, we can paint walls while we're in there. We can move in and out big pieces of furniture, which is what we plan to do here. We're going to take this very large hutch into our shop and set it and stage it for Christmas. Here we go, dealer's night at 4th Street Antiques in Temecula, California. We moved this piece in without the glass in it, so we took advantage of dealer's night to install the glass into the hutch while no one was there. There's a lot of glass to install, so each of the sides is glass, the back of it is a mirror, we have glass shelves, so there's gonna be quite a bit of cleaning to do once Chuck gets the, um, the glass walls inserted. While Chuck gets ready to install the top shelf, I just jumped in real quick to clean the bottom shelf. 
Oh, this part is so scary. We have the glass walls on the sides and the bottom shelf in, and he's having to kind of work around all of that to get this upper shelf installed. I'm so glad he's doing it. I don't know that I would have the patience required to do this. Chuck's installing the beveled glass onto the doors of the hutch and the look of concentration on his face says everything. I was so worried that they would break. I'm so glad they didn't. Here is the hutch before we painted it. Let me know if you like it better this way or this way. Look at it, it's all done. It's staged for Christmas. It's in our shop, ready to go. Here's a quick little tour of what we've staged with. We brought in our vintage Santa collection for Christmas. All items in our hutch are available for sale. You know I gotta put some milk glass in there. I love my milk glass. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think? Are you loving this look with all of the vintage Santas or no? Here's a before pic of the buffet that we found at the estate sale. We don't have the buffet in our shop yet. We're waiting for some items to sell before we bring it in. Once again, I've painted both pieces in Cottontail by Chalky Chicks with black wax added to the details. I've cleaned and vacuumed out the velvet. It looks brand new. And here is our piece all done. It's gorgeous. I love it. I just, I can't even believe how beautiful I think it turned out. All right, you guys, that's all for this week. I'm Jessie from Urban Legends Antiques, and thanks for coming along for the ride.